for the 500cc solo first leg. And a lot of names to look out for already. Mark Loren, Gary Lobb, Chris Tritton, Tim Hunter, we haven't seen, of course, on the grass track circuits at all. Clayton Williams, Mark C. Wright, Phil Ashcroft, Duncan Tolhurst, and Steve Wilson. So a tremendous lineup for the first race of the afternoon. They're collecting themselves on the start line. The tapes are ready to go. Uh, thought we were going to be underway then, but our starter doesn't look very happy with something on the far side there. The red flag, I can see, being waved.
Australia. Well, he certainly proved his word because he does look absolutely incredible. Right to Mr. and Steve Bailey are there in second, and they're now under pressure from the full pin fold. And the revs start to go up, so it looks as if we are ready for race three, the first of the national class. Starla looks happy this time, the green flag goes in the air, we get underway with race three. Trevor Banks has made a cracking start from the outside of the gate, moves his way across the field, Martin Hagen's up there. Number three, the number of Martin Hagen, but it's Jeremy Doncaster that gets to the front. Making the break from Trevor Banks in second. That looks to me to be Craig Boyce is up there in third, going for the wide line around the outside. It is indeed Craig Boyce on the outside. But Jeremy Doncaster is the man to catch. Trevor Banks is still there in second. Craig Boyce is still there in third. Martin Hagen holding forth at the moment. Both as you can see starting to pull that front wheel up as Craig Boyce goes to Jeremy Doncaster and gets him on the inside. Jeremy Doncaster looks over his shoulder after that contact was made by Craig Boyce. But Boyce looks okay and Jeremy Doncaster looks okay as well. They're both still going. Jeremy Doncaster as well, but it's Craig Boyce that's got away from them. Whilst that flag goes for him, so as I mentioned, the first time we've seen him on the grass, he looks spectacular in practice. He really looks as if he's going to be very Jeremy Doncaster hangs on the second, Martin Hagen gets third, so Banks gets fourth. Peter Loy comes across the line in fifth and Vince Kinchin just behind him for sixth place. But what a start to the national class. There was no way through underneath Jeremy Doncaster, but Craig Boyce looked to find his way through. Riders come to the line for race six. Away we go, it's a nice clean start this time. We're looking for half of that 773 right on the outside, but at the moment it is Ben Howell that made the break. But the challenge comes back again from Stuart Williams, number 203, he goes extremely wide. 
Richard Masson has got it from Stuart Williams over his side. Moore's up there as well. Those two almost together as they go into that first bit.
The riders missed that announcement earlier on. I've still got a left-hand glove here that's been handed in by the marshals. I was saying that, I suppose it might not be a rider. If somebody's lost a left-hand glove, been handed in here. Looks a very expensive type of glove. And if you've got the right-hand one, and you'd like to recover it. So away we go with race 26. Looking for Clayton Williams, perhaps it's Clayton Williams that breaks going into that first corner. Richard Musson has gone right in after him, gone a very, very wide line. The rest of the riders are going to go to the second. Clayton Williams has got away though. Clayton Williams it is that leads us three riders together for that second place. Vince Kinchin has got the best of it. Richard Musson is on his outside. Problems once again for Will James as he coast past us. He was right up there with them in that second and third spot. Williams must be making this race here. He comes round off that pit then, not really under any pressure, but Vince Kinchin is holding that second. He's certainly under pressure. Richard Musson, the small figure of Richard Musson, is up there in third place, but pushing hard for that second. As I say that, you can see that he's going after that first place. He's gone straight after him and Vince Kinchy looks to be going around the outside this time. A great ride from Vince Kinchy as he goes very, very wide. Clayton Williams tries to take his line. Just about manages it as there's one more lap to go. What a great race this has turned out to be. Kinchy goes around the outside of Clayton Williams and looks to be going to be well. Clayton Williams will only step the go, not too far away from Vince Kinchy. Richard Mutton, seeing the back wheel off Clayton Williams, goes after him as well. The checker flag comes down. What a great ride from Vince Kinchy. Wayne Williams gets second, Richard Musson gets third, Bill Ashcroft gets fourth, Jonathan Sims comes through for fifth. But I think all congratulations to Vince Kitchen. He missed a trip to Germany in the week because he got injured last Sunday, but hasn't he come back strong? We've got number 68, that's Alan Farmer. Number three, that's Martin Hagen. Number six, Jeremy Doncaster. Number 17, Clayton Williams. 773 is Richard Musson. 352, it's great to see him in the final four, Hurry. Number 54, Andy Riley. Number 11, Trevor Banks. 74, Duncan Tolhurst. And number 81, Paul Pratt. Well, who's it going to be? Have you tipped anybody? As they get underway, they get the start. And you can see it, Trevor Banks has made a tremendous start. Trevor Banks is at Dyson in that first corner. You can see also up there is Jeremy Doncaster going around the outside. Clayton Williams is up there in third. Clayton Williams looking to go all the way around the outside. Martin Hagen trying to get up the inside of Trevor Banks. Trevor Banks it is that still leads. Clayton Williams on the outside. Martin Hagen is still there in the white leathers on the inside. Andy Riley up there in fourth place. And Clayton Williams is up there in third. Clayton Williams looking to go all the way around the outside. Martin Hagen went through the inside. Now Martin Hagen goes after Clayton Williams. Pushes Clayton Williams very, very wide and Martin Hagen gets the lead from Clayton Williams. Dies in that top bend, holding first place now in front of Trevor Banks, who's come back underneath Clayton Williams. Clayton Williams goes back to the outside of the long way down to the inside of the line. Martin Hagen is great. Gets away from the result in that bend. The last half bang will be ready for him this time as he comes round. There's one more lap to go. Martin Hagen leads from Clayton Williams and Trevor Banks all way together. Andy Riley holds fourth, but really the action is up there in that first three. Trevor Banks is still holding second place. Martin Hagen still holds it. We've got the checker flag being raised, but it's certainly going to be a fight right to the line. Martin Hagen looks over his shoulder. He's wondering where they're all coming from. He gets it. Clayton Williams gets second, Trevor Banks gets third, Andy Riley gets fourth, Richard Mutton gets fifth, Alan Palmer gets fifth, and indeed sixth place. A great finish there for Paul Hurry in seventh place. Indeed, behind a very, very quick national runner. That's a great result for him. But what a tremendous final. It looked good on paper. We lost Jeremy Doncaster in that first corner. That's what the Catamount's opinion is. And indeed, what a great start from Trevor Banks. He really has been getting out of that box very, very quick and swiftly this year. Race two coming to the line. The lineup should be Trevor Banks. On riding number two this afternoon, Rob Fortune, Mike Beaumont, Andy Riley, Nigel Green, Rob Camden, John Boston, and Adrian Mower. <laughs> Daisy comes to the line. 
the other hand, as you see, is right in the middle of the circuit. That's where we made a good start from, and equally so does Trevor Banks. But it's Andy Riley that makes the best of it going into that first corner. Trevor Banks is up there as well. John Boston's on the inside of those two, and it is John Boston that makes the better line around that first bend. John Boston goes down the bank straight. Well, that's George trying to close the gap in fourth place at the moment. But it's John Boston just going a little bit wide. He's allowed Trevor Banks to come through on the inside of him. Andy Riley is still there in third place. The shoot by Rob Fortune at the moment. Those four have got away from the rest of the field a little bit. It almost looks as if there's going to be a change in second. Andy Riley has got through as well. Number four, but Trevor Banks has moved to 
on the inside. Trevor Banks in the yellow there is right on the inside of Martin Hagen. Those two almost together going down. It's Martin Hagen the lead from Trevor Banks who looks to go around the outside. He's looking for the wide line. It's a much, much quicker line, but you have to keep the foul well and truly turned on. Peter Roy is still holding that third spot and just getting up much closer to Trevor Banks as Banks made a mistake going in that pit bend. Perhaps look for Again, he follows that line. Rocky Hagen goes around on the tight line. Hagen moves wide. Banks tries to come back underneath him, so a lot of changing of lines going on between these two. Marty, very, very experienced grass trackers, long trackers as well. And you can see the way that they're changing lines. Trevor Banks trying to... up a lot of power going down that top end, but Banks comes underneath him this time, and Banks goes down the Banks this time has got the line. He's going to be very, very close, and Hagen looks over his shoulder. A great ride between those two, a win for Martin Hagen. Gary Lord gets there, Peter Lloyd gets fourth. But what a tremendous ride from two very experienced grass strikers, Martin Hagen and Trevor Banks. And remember, no Mark C ride for 55 Paul Fry comes in his place. That's the change to the program in race 25. But anxiously we look to see right up in the top scoring is Trevor Banks. Well, you might know how the point score is going. It's one for a win, two for a second. So the lower the point score, the better the position. Trevor Banks sits on four at the moment. But Simon Bree must have seen Marlon at the unbeaten once again. It is Wigley's. He's unbeaten so far this afternoon as he comes into his third ride. As we look to that top corner, it is Wigley Leeds coming out, but Trevor Banks is right there. He's up there in third. Dave Wright in fourth place at the moment. The rear of the scrap is right at the very front because Trevor Banks is putting Simon Wig under a lot of pressure. Again, he tries to go Again, we pulls it very, very tight, but Banksy goes for that faster, wider line. Again, Trevor Banks tries to go wide, and this time he might have got it now. Here's the last that flag goes. We just got a point to in front of Trevor Banks as they cross the line. And Trevor Banks again tries that wide line. It means he's very quick coming out of that top end. He gets very, very close to the he goes round the outside once again. He goes very, very tight. I wonder if he's done enough as they come to the line. It's Simon Wig that gets it. Trevor Banks gets second. Gary Lott gets third. And Dave Wright gets third place. Nigel Green crosses the line in fifth. So it means that equally Mark Lorem, Simon Wig makes sure of a place in the final by being unbeaten. And we've got four riders coming out. Those riders are Peter Lloyd, number four. Pete Reed, number 71, Paul Hurry, number 86, and Richard Musson, number 773. Out of these four, only three will go through to the B final. Well, when you look at those four riders coming to the line, I think you'll realise the glass of entry that we've got here this afternoon. This is just to find three places in the B final. If one, two, and three go through, the fourth place finisher misses out on both the A and the B final. So no qualifying place for the fourth finisher. An extra race on our programme to decide which three of these four riders goes through into the B final. Paul Hurry leads it going into that first bend. Richard Musson dives underneath him. Richard Musson leading as they go round that top bend. Paul Hurry's there with him. He reads in third place at the moment. Well, this might be a race that we look at these four names on paper. Remember, two of them go through, one misses out. Richard Musson leads. Paul Hurry in second, Peter Lloyd in third, and Pete Reed is the man that's missing out at the moment. No, we know that can possibly change as Pete Reed goes underneath Peter Lloyd. The front two still scrapping it out to a 
Don't maybe into that fifth bend. Almost together. They can almost lean on each other as they go into that fifth bend. Richard Musson on the inside. Both these two youngsters that have just come into the sport. Richard Musson certainly looking for a great future in Speedway, as equally is Paul Hurry. Had his first adult ride only four weeks ago. He's been through a very confident ride. He's been through a very confident ride. lost touch with him a little bit. Now that is Pete Lloyd, perhaps is going to be the one that misses out. The last lap flag goes for Paul Hurry and Richard Musson. I'm sure they'll use this as valuable experience. They go down that back straight for the last time in this run. So the front three we are going to see in the final. As they come across the line, it is going to be Paul Hurry, Richard Musson, Peter Reid. And unfortunately missing out in that runoff will be Peter Lloyd.